Okay, we're going to give this a try, see how this works out. I'm just going to the exam review. I'm going to go through and try using PowerPoint here and full screen. Hopefully I can do a little markup. This is going to go quickly. I'll go all the way start from beginning to end uh, and try to use a highlighter and whatever else I've got. First off, the first one, obviously, it's important to know Newton's laws, potential and kinetic energy, the work energy theorem in its simplest form is mgh equals one half mv squared. You have to know that g is the acceleration, gravitational acceleration constant. In the first one, you have to know that at 9.8 meters per second per second. In the second one, it is 32.2 feet per second per second. The first one goes from height to velocity. The other one goes from velocity to height. Number three, you have a vector something you can do with coordinate converting your calculator or break something up which is given by polar coordinates of 300 for the magnitude 65 degrees north of east and an elevation angle of 30.5 and to break that up in the standard I J K notation and you should write it out in I J and K go to the next screen try this again from beginning next all right Again, a coordinate convert problem. You can use the calculator program. You should use it. You can use any number of things, but learning that 3D and 2D coordinate conversions are very similar. The H the TI-83 doesn't have it, so we had to use a program to do that. Other calculators will be able to do that. Number five, six, and seven. Try to do them without a calculator, but the calculator should work but always check that with the number that a calculator gives it gives you makes some sense. So in this case, you need to know that you're not changing the datum here. This is going from absolute to absolute, and you're going from PSI to feet of head. 14.7 PSI equals 33.9 feet of head. In this case, you're going from absolute to gauge, so you're shifting from you're shifting up 760 millimeters first by actually sub, uh, you're shifting it's 560 so you're less than um, zero gauge so you're shifting down 760 millimeters and then converting with a 14.7 psi equals 760 millimeters of mercury again the calculator does these things number eight I've repeated infinitely number an infinite number of times in class that if I have something that weighs a pound and I raise it up one foot I've given it one foot pound of energy a gallon is 8.33 pounds we're raising it up 30 feet and then dropping it back down converting that energy which will be 30 feet times 8.33 pounds to get you foot pounds number nine you have to be able to once again visualize and realize that northeast is a direction it is 45 degrees north of east and so you have something here that can be a radial vector that is described as 20 for r 45 for theta and 5 degrees off a of vertical that's the zenith angle so that's an 85 for phi and you have a coordinate convert program to do that, to get that in I, J, K notation, and then you know it's R cross F. If you're given mixed, at least with these programs that's on the calculator, if you're given mixed radial and standard engineering notation, you may need to convert from one to the other for one of them, and I would recommend always going into standard engineering notation. Number 10 is a scalar product. You should know for scalar products in standard engineering notation, you take the first two multiplied together, plus the next two multiplied together, plus the next two multiplied together. But it's not a bad idea to write it up in the format that you're used to and then multiply out the columns. 11 and 12, you've got to understand that when you add like terms, they've got to have the same units. So those are both feet of head or foot pounds of energy per pound of material. Typical units of flow, 
flow. Q is volume over time, cubic feet per second, not feet per second, cubic feet per second. Velocity is feet per second. And Q equals V times A. Most of these equations, equations were given in that sheet. Okay, again, Q equals V times A. So if you keep the same, for number 14, you keep the same flow rate and you decrease the area by half, you're going to increase the velocity by two. Number 15, you have to understand that velocity or energy loss is proportional to the velocity head. So when you all of a sudden triple the velocity, you're going to get three squared. These are all basic math problems, to tell you the truth. Um, so you really need to put down an equation and think and plug numbers in. If you're going to get a comparison of numbers, you usually plug the first one in as one and the second one in as the triple or the double or the quadruple. So in other words, in this equation, one becomes one squared becomes one, three squared becomes nine. The typical units of kinetic viscosity, you need to really start to remember some of these or understand the cool numbers that get you something better than the number. Reynolds number, the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces is for a round uh, conduit dV diameter times velocity divided by kinematic, kinematic viscosity. That's the way you remember kinematic viscosity as square feet per second. Unit vector is a cross product. In this case, you're given three points, and so you can determine two vectors, the first vector being 2, 0, 0, and the second vector being 1, 3, 0, and you take the cross product, I, J, K. You take the magnitude of that, you take that vector and divide it by its magnitude and get you something that's going to look like something I plus something J plus something K. But in this case, when you look at it, each of these are in the flat plane, so you should get something that turns out to be 1K when you're done. Normal range of velocities of flow in a, in a pipe, 10 to 3 to 10. It goes up from there, but you need to get that in your head so you have something to check against. 19, Manning's equation. Again, you are writing out Manning's equation, which is the one that has slope to the one-half power or the square root. And the relative roughness of a concrete 12, 24-inch diameter pipe, you have to realize you need to go with the roughness of the pipe divided by two feet. Those roughness numbers are given in feet. I'm going to end this here, post it out, and begin again with question number 21.